Hi everyone, welcome to our fourth info session. Um, my name is Lauren Ping and I'm one of the founders of Branham Alumni Network, which is a group of Branham alumni dedicated to helping uh, current students navigate the college applications process. And uh, throughout this week, we've had various info sessions about uh, what it's like to attend a UC, and we're providing the student perspective on that. Uh, I'm actually not going to be hosting this session, um, but we have the lovely Chantal, uh, and so she's going to introduce herself and run this whole session. Hi, I'm a senior at Branham. I'm part of Bruin to Bruin, which is like a tutoring club on campus, so if you need like help with um, subjects in school, feel, feel free to reach out to us. We also do things with the um, Brenham Alumni Network, like this webinar. Uh, so we're gonna start the presentation. Um, so today we're gonna do a uh, alumni introduction, basic facts of the UC campus, um, interview with the alumni, and Q&A. Um, for the Q&A, feel free to just private message Ken through the Zoom chat, um, just like during the presentation. <clears throat> All right, so hi, my name is Ken Yamashita, and I am a sophomore at UC Irvine. I am currently a psychology BS major, which um, for those of you that don't know, the difference between like a Bachelor of Science versus a Bachelor of Arts major is the BS major track that I'm on is just more science-based and science-focused. So a lot of the classes and requirements that I have to take um, align with like bio, chemistry, physics, stuff like that to lead to a more like a graduate school kind of track later on. Um, on campus, I'm involved in the campus wide honors collegium. Um, it's basically the honors program for Irvine. And so just a little bit about that. It's um, a program that they select students, incoming freshmen that um, I guess stick out to them and they basically have a special course track for them. So the special course track um, goes through their GEs. So it's like, instead of taking, you know, your anthropology and your humanities or all these different classes to satisfy GEs, they have overarching courses that kind of cover everything that you need. Um, it's a little bit harder, of course, because it's honors, but um, I mean, taking it, it was pretty easy. I think it was really good. It lets you kind of experience a lot of the different you know, fields of study without having to take so many units of classes. Um, yeah, and for my high school experience, um, I was mainly a music oriented person. So I would be involved in like marching band, percussion and stuff like that. But I was also involved with clubs like NHS and the Spare Environmental Club as well. Um, so some basic facts about UC Irvine. Of course, it's located in UC or located in Irvine, right? Southern California. It's a pretty suburban area. I wouldn't say it's too crowded, um, but it's definitely not, you know, out in farmland. Um, we're in a quarter system. So right now I'm still in summer, right? Our summer session actually, or sorry, our fall quarter actually starts next Thursday on October 1st. So we start very late. Um, but our quarters are 10 weeks long. So each class you'll take is a 10 week session and then you got a break and then you go to the next uh, bunch of classes. The student faculty ratio is 18 to one, according to the internet. Uh, for me personally, my lecture sizes are a lot bigger than that. Um, because I'm a psychology major, a lot of my intro classes have a lot of students. So we'll have anywhere from like 200 to 300 students in a single class. But um, whenever we have our discussions or seminars, which are kind of smaller class sizes to really break down the content and get to know your professor and your TAs. Those are definitely around like 20 people. So a little bit more similar to like the average high school class. Um, the acceptance rate is 29%. And then our undergraduate population is about 29,736 people. Uh, some popular majors in Irvine are social psychology or social sciences. Um, so one cool thing about Irvine is it's uh, really geared towards first generation college students. And so um, for those of you that don't know, a first generation college student is basically the first person in your family to go to college, right? So Irvine has a lot of resources to help um, new college students navigate um, just college in general because they don't have anyone to really uh, like a precedent to kind of figure it out. 
And so one of the really popular majors is in the so School of Social Sciences. So that's where a lot of first-gen students tend to go. But we are also known for our STEM majors, which include like biological sciences and engineering, as well as business and economics. Um, as for ranking, we are the number nine top public university in America. And we are also known for our criminal justice, uh, Hispanic institutions, and public health. Okay, so now we'll go over some questions. So the first question is, what factors contributed to your decision to pick your university? Yeah, so um, UC Irvine was one of five UCs that I applied to. So I also applied to Berkeley, LA, San Diego, and Davis, as well as Irvine. Um, the reason I chose Irvine was a couple of things. One is the financial aid, of course. Um, college tuition isn't cheap. And so the financial aid you're given depending on the university, definitely plays a major role. Um, the honors program, so as I mentioned before, um, when you apply, there's two waves of acceptances for Irvine. The first wave is for the honors student. So you will actually get your acceptance letter. Uh, I can't exactly remember, but it's definitely at least three to four weeks earlier than everyone else. So that kind of lines up with you'll get your acceptance into Irvine before your other UCs as well, right? Because all the UC acceptances come out around the same time, but the Irvine honors comes earlier. So I knew ahead of time that I got accepted before I knew about my other schools. Um, when I applied, I actually hadn't um, visited Irvine ahead of time. So it was kind of a shot in the dark, but um, looking at Irvine, the campus is definitely um, a really nice culture. It's a laid back kind of, it's not as competitive, I would say. We still have like driven students and we still have, you know, the regular college studying, cramming for finals and stuff. But I mean, I'd say there's still like that sense of kind of, you know, relaxing and enjoying college life as it is, not completely focusing on studying all the time. Um, and then, of course, it is in Southern California. And so I normally live in San Jose. So it was uh, nice to, you know, kind of live away from home. I think for me, it was really important to experience college life as almost like an independent and to start transitioning into adulthood and kind of experiencing what it's like to live by yourself. Okay, so the next question is, describe the demographics and vibe of your school. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, right, it's a kind of chill vibe, very laid back. Um, demographics wise, UC Irvine is known for being Asian, right? We have definitely a lot of Asians that can be both from the US and also international students. We have a lot of international students as well. Um, because of this, especially with international students, um, I don't mean to play on stereotypes, but generally a lot of us like to play video games, right? UC Irvine has collegiate video gaming teams with like League of Legends, Overwatch, and stuff like that. So you'll find a majority of people will have some sort of video gaming background or experience. Um, however, that's not the only demographic for our school, right? We also have the first gen students, which can be anywhere from like Hispanic to Chinese to Caucasian, right? It's a very diverse group. So I'd say we have a very mixed demographic, but it also depends a lot on the school you're in. I think like, for example, the School of Social Sciences is a lot more diverse demographically compared to let's say the public health or the nursing school. Um, what major activities go on at your campus? What are you involved in? Yeah, so, um, Activities wise, UC Irvine has all the you know typical college stuff. We have um, sports, well, we have sports games, but we mainly focus on basketball because we don't have a football team. So basketball is our main thing. We also have our Greek life. So we have the fraternities and sororities. We have um, all the clubs and organizations, right? Ranging from like sports to uh, coding, to religious, to like, uh, occupation, stuff like that. So a lot of uh, clubs that you can get involved in. Um, as for me personally, uh, I am involved in the campus, the Campus Wide Honors Collegium, which is more of a program rather than a club. Um, I was involved with a couple of religious clubs at the start, such as KCM, which is Korean Christian Ministry. But um, eventually I actually moved towards a off-campus group 
for a church nearby. So, um, yeah. What do you love about your school? Um, well, there's a lot I'd say. Um, I'd say one of the big things is like the vibe, as I mentioned before. I think as a personally, I'm a very laid back person. Like in high school, uh, I mean, I did get good grades and I worked hard, but I wasn't like always, you know, top of the class trying to like compete, very like, you know, go getter. I'm a very I'm like a, I, was, I, I, I would describe myself as like a social introvert, you know? I'm a, I like to talk to people, but at the same time, I like my space. And I, I think Irvine is a great place for that because it gives you options for both, right? As I mentioned before, we have our, we have our Greek life, we have our clubs, we have our sports games. So we have the stuff that you can, you know, go out and fully, you know, like expand your college life. But then you also have you know, the places that you need if you want to just kind of chill out and do your own thing, right? We have great libraries, great like uh, computer labs. We have good parks, like the campus is built around uh, Aldrich Park, which is just this like pretty large park. I mean, it's like about a mile circumference wise if you take a lap. So there's just a lot of places to just do your own thing. And I think that's really cool. Um, another thing that's really important to me is food. I really am in, into food. Dorm food at Irvine, I would say, is all right. It's not the best. I'd say maybe uh, 6.5 to 7 out of 10. Um, when, you, when you dorm as a first year, you have like a meal plan and you go to the uh, different uh, the cafeterias, depending on which dorm you're in. The food there is all right. I think the best part was every Tuesday, they would serve like street tacos, which was pretty good. But um, I think the better part is that Irvine itself is a really good place for food, right? Like, um, right next to the campus, you have this place called UTC, which is a university town center, and just a plaza full of like, restaurants and nice places to eat and shop. And then you also have like different malls and areas that are really close to campus that are just good for, you know, spending a weekend out with your friends or going out to eat or, you know, whatever you want. What's your least favorite part? What improvements do you wish upon your school? Um, I think the least favorite part was the discrepancy between dorm quality. So as I mentioned before, right, there's different dorms. So we have a newer set of dorms, which are called the towers, right, which are literally like towers, like apartment towers. They're Middle Earth and Mesa. So these are just newer, right? They have better bathrooms, better space, you know, got more space, and I don't know, it's just higher quality, I feel like. And I was fortunate enough to be placed in one of these. Um, usually for these dorms, um, there are four people, so you just have to, you know, be willing to live with the other people. However, there are also the other dorms, which are called the classics, and these are the older dorms, right? So these are the dorms that, they weren't terrible, I'm not saying they're like boon, but compared to the towers, it's like not as good. Uh, these are the ones that you'll have like singles, doubles, whatever, triples, smaller rooms. But I think the biggest part about me is the bathrooms weren't connected to your room, right? So you'd have to like go from your, if like let's say you needed to go pee in the middle of the night, you'd have to go from your room out to the hallway and like walk to the bathroom, which is a shared between like four rooms compared to the towers where your bathroom was connected to your apartment uh, with one other room. So you had two, rooms with one apartment, but it was connected. So yeah, I wish they would, you know, improve, I guess, the lower quality of the ones. So, yeah. What things would you have told high school senior you about your school? <sighs> um, I'd say one thing, big thing is money. Uh, like, there's a lot of just hidden costs, I feel like, with college. I think in high school, I did work, but I feel like I was more like extravagant with my money, you know, it's, but I wouldn't save as much as I should have. You know, I think in college, you, especially if you're living away from home, you forget that you have to start, you know, doing everything yourself. So you have to pay for food, you have to pay for like laundry soap and laundry detergent. You have to pay for like, if you want to get around a car or an Uber or whatever, right? So there's just a lot of costs that 
you don't think about that you have to start thinking about. Right? Getting a job is also a really good solution to this. Like I worked at Chipotle for a little bit when I was down in Irvine just to help offset my spending costs. But um, I mean, the earlier you start is the better. And I'd say, um, I think that leads to like also just going out and getting it, right? I think college, especially, everyone's in the same place, right? Everyone's um, going to this new place away from home by themselves, right? So everything that you're feeling, everyone else is too, if that makes sense. So I think for me, like in high school, I wasn't a like talk to everybody, meet, make new friends kind of person, right? I would just kind of let things happen. But in college, I really pushed myself to like branch out and meet new people. And it worked out really well, right? I made new friends, I found connections and stuff. And I think just going for it is a really good thing. Like in your, like you, in high school, right? You have your little cliques or whatever, whether that be through clubs or classes, whatever, right? But in college, it's like, if you don't put yourself out there, you're not gonna do it. You're not gonna get anything, right? Because I mean, you have your dorm mates, but it's not guaranteed that you're going to be best friends with them, especially if they're random, like you might hate them, but you're just going to have to deal with. Um, in classes, you know, like I said, there are 200 to 300 people. There's no way you're going to meet everybody. You know, you, it's, you, it's up to you to kind of um, take initiative for your own, I guess, happiness or your own kind of success in college. Okay, so now is our Q&A section. So just send all your questions to the chat or a private message, Ken. Okay, so um, the first question is, what is the drinking culture like in Irvine? So, hmm. Um, I, I wouldn't know how to really explain it. Like, for me personally, I haven't really experienced it. However, uh, you know, there are the typical college parties and everything like that, right? So you will have your parties that you can go to and there'll be like alcohol or stuff. Um, you know, it's like, it's a typical college. It's not like we are absent all the time. I think Although I feel like it's more popular to um, have like smaller little get togethers. I think like soju is really popular just because we're all Asian. So a lot of people go to like the local H Mart and get, you know, Korean soju and just kind of drink it in their rooms. But um, yeah, I, I can't really say much besides, yes, we are a regular college and we have Asian tendencies in drinking. Although a lot of people do get, go to KBBQ and, you know, drink soju there, so that's good. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, what do you do for fun when not studying or in class? All right. So for me, I was more of a, I think, gaming and food. So when I wasn't with my friends, I would play a lot of games in my dorm. Right, I would just play on my computer uh, with my roommates or, you know, with other people that I met online. And so I would just play a lot of mainly League of Legends. I learned like almost specifically because I was going to Irvine. Um, when I go out with friends, we, as I mentioned, there was the UTC, like the little plaza center that we would go to. We would usually go there to get like dinner or food and we chill out. Um, board games were a big thing for us. I think, uh, you know, after a while, if you hang out with your friends every day, you run out of things to do. So we would always, you know, play board games and we would bet or we would place bets so that the loser would either have to pay for food or, you know, do a dare or something. But I think for me personally, a lot of my free time activities are really laid back and stuff. Um, what was your average day like on campus? Um, or I guess two parts. And would you say that your classes were stressful and had a heavy course load? 
So one of the benefits of honors program that I forgot to mention is you get to choose your classes early. So, you know, um, like scheduling wise, I'm sure that some of you have heard like in college, you can make your schedule however you want. That is half true. Um, yes, you can choose whatever classes you want as long as it's, you know, for your major or whatever, but everyone else is doing the same thing, right? And it's not unlimited space. So um, you can't always get the schedule you want. Me, since I was in honors, I got the schedule I want or wanted. Uh, for fall quarter, my very first quarter, I actually put all my classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So Tuesday, Thursday, I was completely off. So I had like a three-day school week. It was really, really nice. Um, I think I started at like nine and I ended around four to five every day. However, um, you know, people say don't ever take AMs, but it's very true. I have not yet taken an AM and I never will, even though I did it in high school. I take the night, I took a 9 AM. I probably won't do that either. 9 AM is still too early for me. Like you, everything you've done in high school, it kind of changes. It's kind of weird, but, um, yeah, so for me, my schedule has been really nice. So the first quarter I had Tuesday, Thursday off. And then from then on, instead, I tried to make my schedule all, Monday through Friday, but all in like early afternoon. So I would work from like 11 to three every day. That's my classes with a lunch break at 12 and I was done. So it was really, really nice. And I was taking like 12 to, or 16 to 20 units every quarter. So it's not like I was slacking on units. I was still taking like a max course load but I still had a really nice um, schedule. You know, I still had time in the evening to work or hang out and then mornings I could sleep in. So it worked out for me. Um, what did you write your college essays about? Uh, let's see. I don't remember specifics, but I think I know the topics. I know um, I talked about uh, community service for one, right? As I mentioned, I was in the Spur Club and so I was part of the Spirit Club for three years. And then I also helped out with community service outside of school. So I talked about that and just um, stuff I did like in my local community, you know, to make a difference and how I was involved with the campus and off campus stuff. I talked about music because that was what I was involved in mainly, right? So I talked about my passion for it and what I was doing to also give back, right? So I also, um, for a time I taught at the Ida Price Middle School, which is one of the feeder schools for Branham. So I went back and taught their March band for a little bit. Um, what else did I talk about? I think I talked about, honestly, I can't really remember, but I know those two were the big things. I think my theme for my college essays was what I, what difference did I make and what, what was I passionate about? and how they overlap, right? So I think colleges are really interested in what makes you drive, like what makes you run, right? What are you interested in? What do you love to do and stuff like that. And if you notice, it had nothing to do with psychology. So it doesn't really have to be major oriented. Of course it helps, but you know, mine was music. Uh, and then of course, getting back to the community is really nice if you have that. <laughs> um, what does it take to be in the honors program and how do we apply for it? So the honors program as a freshman, you are automatically applied into it. Every incoming freshman is a put into that honors pool and then they'll choose. If you don't get in, you can get in later on. So what you do once you are at Irvine, there are different like applications or programs that you can try to apply into later. Um, so if you don't get in as like an incoming freshman, I think even freshman year, if you show interest and you know do your research and apply, uh, it's possible to get in later. So um, what does it take to be in it? I honestly can't tell you because I was just offered it right off the bat. Um, I'm sure you have to have, you know, pretty good grades, uh, consistency in, you know, like extracurriculars and um, community service, you know, it shows that you're a well rounded student that can really elevate the campus and their, you know, picture of Irvine. Um, how many hours did I spend studying a day? I would say like an hour 
like I'm, I'm not a studying person at all like okay this question please do not take this to heart like uh, my studying is very different from like other people like I study a lot less like I you know in high school I was the type to not study at all I would do most of my homework if not all in class and then if we had a test I would you know review maybe once through beforehand so I studied very little um on maybe like an I don't think it was even a daily thing it was more of like a, I did my homework when it was you know when I got it so it could have been like 30 minutes to an hour every day every other day before exams, like if there was an exam on Monday, I would definitely spend like at least 30 minutes a day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday studying. But, um, you know, study load, it, it, it has to do with classes, what classes you're taking, your personal habits and stuff, and uh, how hard the content is, right? Some of my classes were super easy. Some of them were like, like math. It's not a studying thing more. It's more of a practice thing. And then, you know, if it's a psychology class, it's a fact thing. So it kind of depends. Um, was there anything about Irvine that surprised you when you first got on campus? Um, like honestly, probably the Asians. Uh, you know, when people say there's a lot of Asians on campus, I kind of thought they were over exaggerating it, but they aren't. There's definitely a lot of Asians. Like, if you if you just take a lap around the campus during like a school day, you'll be like, wow. I'm pretty sure it's like 80% Asian. It's not 80% Asian, it's like 50%. But um, there's definitely a lot of Asians. And I guess the school really picks up on that. Like a lot of our, if we have like a food booth on campus, it could be like, it'll be like Chinese crepes, Korean barbecue. Like they, they try to appeal to their Asian population for sure. <clears throat> How often do people from UC Irvine actually go to Disneyland? Honestly, uh, pretty often. I myself, I didn't have like an annual pass to Disneyland, so I didn't get to go, but I definitely wanted to. I was trying to get my friends to go all year. Um, but it's, I think it's like on a good day, it's like 15, 20 minutes away from campus. So it's like easily, even if you don't have a car, you can like Uber, or we have like something called Zipcar where you rent a car to drive. Um, but yeah, if you and your friends like, coordinate, especially because you don't have like a lot of um, work to do on the weekends, you can totally go every weekend. It's not that big of a deal. How many more questions do we have? I just have one more. Okay, we can answer it really quick and then we'll move on to the next okay, okay. question. Um, the last question is what clubs were offered? Um, I can't throw, go through every club because there's like 150 clubs, but um, the main groups are you, you have your sports clubs. So you have your like soccer, basketball, lacrosse, wrestling, taekwondo, stuff like that. Um, you have your like hobbyist clubs. So you have like uh, like the board game club, the Dungeons and Dragons club, the uh, I don't know, other hobbies, stuff like that. Um, you also have your um, uh, like nationality clubs, I guess, like Vietnamese Student Alliance. You have your Korean uh, Alliance, stuff like that. And then you also have your, you know, religious clubs. Um, but yeah, honestly, there's like everything you could possibly imagine. So this is a lot. Well, thank you so much, Ken, for taking time out of your busy day to come um, talk with us about your school. Um, our next panelist is the lovely Jocelyn. Um, I don't know where she is, but you can go ahead and introduce yourself, Jocelyn. Um, hi, my name is Jocelyn. I am a sophomore at UC Santa Barbara. Currently, I'm a communication major. I'm currently trying to add political science as my second double major um, in the process at the moment. Um, on campus, I'm involved with the honors program. I just recently got admitted. Um, and in high school, I was an editor for The Bear Witness. I have a year in ASB. I did two years of field hockey and three years of softball. Okay, so now we're gonna go over some basic facts of UCSB. So it's in Santa Barbara. Um, it uses the quarter system, the student faculty ratio is 17 to one, the acceptance rate is 32%, and the undergrad population is 2,000, oh, 23,070 people. Um, some popular majors are social sciences, 
faculty into interdisciplinary studies and biological sciences. Um, its ranking is number seven. Um, it's known for Hispanic serving institution, uh, best Greek life colleges, and it's number 29 in anthropology and sociology. So now we're gonna go over some questions. Our first question is, what factors contributed to your decision to pick your university? Um, so UC Santa Barbara was always one of my dream schools through all of high school. Um, I knew I always wanted to go to college in a beach town. All of my other top schools were on the beach. You know, I was looking at University of Hawaii, San Diego State, but there was also a certain, wow, I'm sorry, um, certain standard of education that I was looking for, specifically a UC education. So UCSB kind of had everything I wanted. It had the environment that I wanted to live in and it had that high caliber education. Um, I feel like a lot of people don't know this, but we are the number three UC which some people don't expect because they think we're kind of nothing more than a party school, which is so far from the truth. Um, another thing I really liked that set UCSB apart for me was the lack of constant competitiveness. Um, that's not to say it's not competitive to get in, but once you are in, um, even though we are ranked right after UCLA and Cal, I feel like there's a really big gap in the level of academic pressure, if that makes sense. Um, don't get me wrong, we're all here to better ourselves, but it's not necessarily in a way where you're trying to be the person next to you. It's more focused on our individual success while also trying to uplift each other's successes. Our next question is describe the demographics slash vibe of your school. Um, in terms of demographics, UCSB is a predominantly white student body. Um, the Asian community makes up the second largest chunk and then the Hispanic community makes up the third. Um, and I definitely think that since our school is predominantly white, it makes those cultural clubs we have on campus even more important. Um, we have a lot of different ones ranging from the Vietnamese Student Association to Estados Unidos. Um, so if that's something that's really important to you, there's a lot of resources. We have a whole multicultural center dedicated to assisting students of color. Um, we have a lot of multicultural sororities and fraternities. Um, the United Sorority and Fraternity Council is on our campus, and that has Greek life for Asian Americans, Pacific Islanders, Latinos, and other cultures. We have the National Panhellenic Council, which offers Greek life for Black students. Um, and that's not to say that those people can't join the non-cultural fraternities, but some people really like to take advantage, advantage of those cultural frats as a way to stay in touch with their culture while in college. Um, and in terms of the vibe, I talked about this a little bit on the big UC panel on Sunday, but UCSB is kind of exactly how you would picture a college town on the beach, you know. Everyone's definitely a lot more laid back, very Californian, if that makes sense. Um, but at the same time, there's literally always something to do here. The beach is essentially right in our backyard, so people are always out surfing or kayaking. Um, biking is the primary way most people get away, get around around here, so there's always people cycling around. Um, but yeah, the people here are really unlike people I've met anywhere else. Um, I'm sure everyone that talks about their college says the people are so friendly, but like the people here are unrealistically friendly. Um, this is kind of a funny story, but me and my roommates were out surfing the other day and we met this guy out on the water. We were just talking for a little bit, and now two weeks later, he's moving into our house because we all vibed together so well. Um, and that kind of just sums up how we all treat each other down here. It's really just a very welcoming environment. Our next question is, what major activities go on at your campus? What are you involved in? Uh, UCSB really does have something to fit everybody's interests, whether it be through a club, through Greek life, through sports, or whatever else, you can find something here that fits you. Um, for example, last year I was trying to find outlets for volunteering. So first I was looking at Greek life as they do a lot of philanthropy events, raising money for their selective causes. Um, and that didn't end up working out for me. So I started looking at clubs and there are so many to choose from. Um, I didn't end up joining any, but they had volunteering ranging from politics to beach cleanups. And of course there are all sorts of different clubs like the Bad Movies Club, Juggling Club, Surf Team. Um, and like I was saying earlier, we have a lot of those cultural clubs, um, tons of intramural sports that you really don't need to be good at to join. I know I tried the rowing team for a while, but 5 a.m. practices were not 
something I was very interested in. Um, but yeah, I didn't really end up joining very much my first year because I wanted to feel everything out and then decide this year what I wanted to join. Um, but then a global pandemic happened and now I'm not really sure what's happening with our campus events. Um, but I did end up joining the honors program recently, which gives me benefits like priority class registration and separate honors academic advisors. Um, and I am trying to join Greek life again. We're doing an online rush next week. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of things on campus. There is something that will fit almost anybody's interest. What do you love about your school? Something kind of cool about UC Santa Barbara is that right next to campus is this little community called Isla Vista. Um, that's actually where I am right now. I was fortunate enough to be able to move back. Um, and we kind of shorten it to IV. That's Isla Vista IV, you get it. Um, and under typical circumstances, that's where like 95% of UC Santa Barbara students go to live after we do our freshman year in the dorms. Um, and Ivy has 23,000 people squash, squished into about two square miles. So you really have to learn to love your neighbor because we are all a little too jam-packed for any animosity towards each other. Um, but Isla Vista is honestly like my version of Disneyland. This is like my happiest place on earth. Um, even during quarantine, everyone's out in their yards doing something. The beach is like 45 seconds from my front door. Um, and we have our own little mini downtown area with tons of food and a couple of smaller shops. But again, it's really the people in Ivy that make it all so great. Everyone's so friendly. It's just, it's good vibes. We all save good vibes a lot. And at that kind of, it kind of makes sense. What's your least favorite part and what improvements do you wish upon your school? I would say my least favorite part about UCSB is our class registration system. Um, don't get me wrong, I love UC Santa Barbara so much, but it is like a fight sometimes trying to get a class that you really need, um, which is part of why I really wanted to join the honors program because it has that added benefit of priority registration. Um, and I'm not even gonna try to explain how we register for classes because I'm just gonna confuse you guys really bad and I do not want to do that. Um, but I do want to say that that's not a problem that's exclusive just to UCSB. Um, at a lot of schools, as you continue to go through your grades, you're going to have an easier and easier time getting the classes that you do need. Um, so no, no matter what school, no matter what school you end up at, if your freshman year you feel like you're scrambling to try to sign up for things, don't stress too hard. It's not a problem exclusive to you. You just have to work your way up the food chain. Try to use your school's academic advisors to your advantage. Um, but just keep in mind that it's going to get easier as you continue to go through your years at your college. What things would you have told high school senior you about your school? I wish I would have told myself not to be so intimidated by UCSB's reputation. Um, like I said, I'm not going to lie to you guys. UCSB obviously does kind of have that reputation of being a party school and when I got here I was so scared that if I wasn't down to do all this crazy stuff then I wasn't going to make any friends no one was going to want to hang out with me I was just going to be in my dorm all day and that was so not true um and again obviously of course partying happens and if that's something that you're interested in then do it go live your best life but there are so many people here who have absolutely no interest in that lifestyle and they still live very very eventful lives because like I said, UCSB's community really has so much to offer. Um, so if that's something that intimidates you about UCSB or any school that might have that kind of label or reputation, you should not be scared at all because you will find something that fits you here. You will find the people that want to do the things you want to do. Um, but yeah. Okay, so now is our Q&A section. So feel free to either send your questions to everyone or just private message Jocelyn with your questions. Someone said, what's the food like? Okay, I, get, I had a pretty good description for this on the panel. Let me try to remember it. Um, in terms of a grade, I would give 
UCSB's food, like a solid B. Not too bad, not too great. You really gotta find what works for you. But something really frustrating here is our dining food, dining hall hours. Um, some schools, I know at Berkeley, it's open from 7 a.m. to midnight every single weekday. For us, it's not like that. Um, sometimes there, I had friends whose schedules completely did not line up with dining hall hours some days, and they were just trying to like feed themselves based on their dorm food, which is not something that's very easy your first year. Um, so that was just one thing that's kind of irritating, I guess. Um, someone's asking, was there anything about UCSB that surprised you when you first got on campus? Um, I mean, I know I've said before, like, UCSB is on the beach, but I mean, our campus is literally, like, on the beach. There are multiple sections of campus that, like, outside of the classroom window, you can see your, you see the sand, you see the ocean. Um, the 10th floor of our library, you can actually look out and see, like, all of Isla Vista's beaches. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, I wasn't expecting it to literally be on the beach, like people said. Um, what do you know? Honestly, I don't know a lot about our engineering programs about here. Um, we kind of have, we have those colleges separate within UCSB. Oh, I don't want to confuse you guys when I explain this. Basically, UCSB is kind of split up into three different schools. Um, we have College of Letters and Sciences, which has basically 95% of the majors here. Um, and then we have a separate College of Engineering. I'm not in that college, so honestly, I do not know a lot about it. And we have the College of Creative, Creative Studies, which again, I'm not in it. I don't know a lot about it, but most of your guys' majors are going to fall under that first College of Letters and Sciences. You know, that's biology, that's poli-sci, that's communication, that's, that's the big chunk of our majors here. Um, did you know how to surf before you went to UCSB or does everyone eventually learn how to surf since the campus is so close to the beach? Definitely the second one. Um, everyone here, mm, I wouldn't say everyone, 85% of people here learn to surf when they get here. I just started learning maybe like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, but yeah, it's kind of something you don't have to surf to have fun here, but when you're watching people do it all the time, it just, it looks fun. And that's what a lot of people do. They have, um, people are selling boards all the time. But yeah, I didn't learn until I got here. I just started learning. It, you pick up on it pretty easy. Um, how did you decide on a major? I wanted to be a business major really bad, but UCSB unfortunately does not offer it. Um, so if that's something that's important to you, that might be a deterrent from this school. Um, but communications was kind of just the closest to business that I could think. Um, that has a lot of jobs in social media, HR, that whole kind of range. Um, and then political science, just with everything happening in the world right now, I'm sure you guys don't need me to get into it, but I really, I really want to have time to make a difference. And I feel like political science is a good way to have that impact. Um, but you're also welcome to come into college undeclared. A lot of people do that. Um, and our academic advisors will do a really good job helping you, helping match you to a major that goes in with your interests. Um, how hard is it to get housing apartments in UCSB? Right now, unfortunately, with COVID-19 and everything, all of UCSB's housing is actually shut down, um, unless you have accentuating circumstances. I know there's a lot of international students who didn't want to do, didn't want to be having to do California classes in an international time zone. So I know those people are welcome to come back. Um, but getting a house or apartment in Ivy, Isla Vista is very, very hard. We start looking, we start school late September, early October, and you really start looking for a house or apartment like November or December. You start signing leases in January. Um, which is something that's kind of unique to UCSB. I have friends at a lot of other schools who are staying home for the quarter because they didn't get locked into a house lease super early, but most, students, most students here ended up getting kind of locked into a contract pre-corona because that's just kind of the culture in Ivy. Um, what things do you do in your free time when you're not in school? Like I said, surfing was something I recently picked up. The beach is really a real large source of entertainment, to be quite honest, but 
you do get tired of it kind of fast when you start going every day. But Santa Barbara has so much to offer. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have been to like Santana Row in San Jose, but we basically have our version of Santana Row called State Street. Um, and it's a really cool place, tons of shops, tons of restaurants, and again, right leads right to the beach. Um, what else do we do for fun? Like I said, biking is a, the main form of transportation for most people here. So bike rides are a common thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, really hanging out with friends, my roommates right now because of the pandemic, obviously. Um, yeah, it's a lot, it's a very laid back town. So it's a lot of just hanging out to be quite honest. Um, what did you write your college essays on? I am a first generation college student. I didn't have any family members go to college before me. So I know I wrote one about that. Um, I wrote one about how my mom, my mom raised me as a teen mom. She was 18 and I commend her for doing it. So I know I wrote one of my essays kind of just thanking her for everything she did and praising the work that it took and explaining that I kind of owed her this college degree in response for what she did to me, did for me, I'm sorry. Um, I wrote one just about kind of being in leadership, being an ASB, that's always an advantage. Um, if you do, or if you are involved in any clubs or anything at Branham. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of my last one. Oh, and I wrote my last one about being an older sister. I'm the oldest sibling out of four siblings. So I wrote about just being, you know, kind of the example for them and wanting to go to a good university and kind of set the bar high for them so that when it comes time for them to go, they have high expectations for themselves. Um, but yeah, I know some people, if you have accomplishments, those are always a good thing to write about. I don't have a lot of like accomplishments on my belt. I didn't start any clubs in high school. I didn't do anything crazy like that. Um, so I wrote about my trauma, which not trauma, but I don't know. Sometimes milking your not favorable circumstances that you've dealt with in life can definitely have a positive impact on your essays, I guess, which you deserve it. Why not make something positive out of it? Um. What is your average day on campus, both pre-COVID and now? I'm gonna answer now, we don't do anything. We literally sit in the house all day. We're all going a little crazy. We're kind of excited for classes to start just because there's literally nothing else to do here. Um, of course, there's the couple people here who are kind of ignoring social distancing guidelines, partying anyways, which is really frustrating because we're all trying to just get back on campus, but those are the people that are making it more difficult. Um, so for the safety of my roommates and I, we're really just hanging out in the house, maybe going to the beach every once in a while to hit the surfs, hit the surfs, oh my gosh, hit the waves. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically what we're doing now. Um, before Corona, I miss before Corona so much. Um, going to campus during the day was obviously one of my favorite parts just because we do have such a beautiful campus. If you guys can take a virtual tour of UCSB, I definitely recommend it. Um, but yeah, biking around in the morning, usually stopping in Ivy downtown to get some food after class maybe. Um, my favorite place to go is Blenders. It's a little smoothie bar. Um, going back to the dorms, a lot of times we like to do our homework together in the floor lounge. Um, which, yeah, we would all just get back from class and kind of just set up shop on the tables in there, and we would be out there until, like, 9 or 10 p.m. just studying, working on stuff together, you know, taking a break to go get dinner together. Um, but yeah, dorm life was something I really miss. Um, I hope that you guys, depending on what grade you are, will eventually get the chance to do that, because it really is a crazy experience that I'm very glad I got to be a part of. Um... Which other colleges did you get into and why did you choose UCSB over those? Um, the only other UC I got into was UC Santa Cruz and I really liked UC Santa Cruz. I liked the location, you know, even though it was in the forest, it was, it's not like it's crazy far from the beach. Um, I just wanted to be a little bit further from home and this was kind of a nice distance where it's not like I can't get home and I can get home in about four hours and see my family, but I'd still a good enough distance where my parents aren't going to come visit me every weekend. Um, outside of UC, San Diego State was my other top school. That's where I wasn't going to go if I didn't get admitted here. And there's nothing wrong with San Diego State. I really liked it as a school, but again, I was just kind of looking for that 
UC education level. Um, but yeah, that's kind of why I ended up picking UCSB over a lot of the CSUs that I applied for. But I really liked the CSU. San Jose State was a great option. Um, but yeah, UCSB, again, like I said, that was just always one of my dream schools. So as soon as I got in, it was a pretty obvious yes for me. Um, would you say that your classes were stressful or had a really heavy course load? It kind of depends how you manage your time, to be quite honest. Um, in high school, I was never someone that really had to try super hard to, you know, memorize information, get good grades, crank out homework. That was just something that came very naturally to me. And then I got to college and was expecting everything to come very naturally to me. And it, that's not what happened. Um, there's a lot of reading, a lot, a lot of reading. Um, but again, I'm not a STEM major. I'm more of a humanities. So STEM majors would say maybe it's not as much reading, but a lot more labs, a lot more math, a lot of hands-on stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm taking 17 units this next upcoming quarter. That's what I've been taking for the past two quarters. And it's never been anything unbearable as long as you are good at managing your time. That's something I'm not good at. And it led to me having multiple all-nighters having to finish an essay or whatever, but that's a me problem. That isn't any reflection on getting the, on the course load. Um, how is the financial aid at UCSB? I personally did not qualify for any financial aid, so I can't, I can't speak on that super well. Um, I just, my family was able to afford it without their financial aid, without loans, and that's what we're trying to do because I do plan on taking out loans for law school. Um, so I don't want to overload myself with anything. Um, right now, to be quite honest, our financial aid is not, like, our financial aid office is not being very accessible, which is frustrating. Um, they just had a glitch in the system that led to a lot of my housemates randomly getting dropped from their classes because they, they, I don't know, it was a weird situation, but it's kind of frustrating with COVID-19 and everything, getting access to financially, not even just financially, to like academic advisors, getting in contact with anyone right now is a little frustrating. Um, and I don't know, I can't speak on other schools. I'm not sure how accessible they are, but that's one thing about UCSB. That's a little, it's a little irritating right now. Um, is there anything you wish you did in high school before you left for UCSB? Hmm. I wish I had more experience in ASB, to be quite honest. Um, I was only a part of it my senior year of high school, and it was one of my, it was one of my favorite years. Um, but then coming into UCSB, a lot of clubs, a lot of Greek life, anything you join, there's always a hierarchy. There's a lot of leadership positions in basically any club to be filled. And I feel like if I had a little bit more experience in that ASB realm, I would be a little more comfortable trying to reach out for those more like those higher up positions but now I'm just a little intimidated um but even if that's not something you do through ASB if you're in any clubs right now um try and try and get hired try to put yourself out there um just establish the habit so when you get to college that's not something that's intimidating to you is it hard to get a good, get a job around UCSB? Honestly, yes. Right now, I, I've been in Isla Vista for about two months now, and I just had my first day of work today, actually, earlier this morning, because I've been job hunting since I got here, and nothing's really working out, unfortunately. Um, a lot of people, like I said earlier, it's 23,000 students and two square miles, so there's a lot of people looking for jobs right now. Everyone, I, all of my friends that I've talked to are looking to get a job right now. Um, but don't let that intimidate you. If you are someone that is able to bring your car down here, that's what I did. I had to go a little bit outside of our Isla Vista bubble to find something. Um, but there's tons of on-campus jobs usually that are a great option. I have one of my roommates is a tour guide for the school actually, and he loves it. Um, but unfortunately, again, with Corona and everything, all those on-campus jobs are shut down which were normally really, really good options for first year students. Um, but hopefully once everything starts getting, once starts opening back up again, if you guys do choose to come to UCSB, there should be more options for you. What's your favorite class at UCSB? Oh, that's a tough one. I've had some amazing classes here. Um, 
I would say my favorite, I'm a communication major and my favorite class was honestly intro to communications. Um, which some people, I said this in my Sunday UC panel, but a lot of people kind of give me slack for being a communication major. They're like, it's just talking. Why are you studying talking? But in that intro to comm class, you learn so much about like how to persuade people, you know, how to talk to people to get what you want, how to read what other people, like how to read social signals from other people in a community, in a conversation. Um, that was one of my favorite classes. It was with Dolly Mullen. Um, so if you guys ever end up here, keep an eye out for her. She was an amazing professor. Um, but yeah, that was one of my favorite classes here. I don't think I have any more questions unless anyone has a last minute one before we end. Oh, how large are the classes? Are they more lecture or discussion based? Um, UCSB does have quite large classes um, when you're an undergrad like me, especially in your first year. Um, our largest lecture hall, I had two classes in it and we had about 800 people in it. So those ones were very big, a little bit harder to get one on one attention from the professor. Um, but for most of the classes here, your large lectures are all accompanied by a smaller discussion class. Um, and those ones are taught by your TA. And those ones are a lot closer to like 15, 20 people in a class size. Um, so that's where it's a lot easier to get direct help. Um, you'll find that professors are often teaching a lot of students at once, multiple classes even for some of them. So it's not always going to be very easy trying to get in contact with them. Um, I remember earlier when they were reading the stats for UCSB, the student to faculty ratio is 17 to 1, which isn't bad. It's a lot better than some other schools, but I think it can be a little misleading sometimes. Um, you just have to know the right people to reach out to. Um, but yeah, we have some very, very large classes as well as some a lot smaller ones. What are the facilities like? I did not spend a lot of time in the rec center gym just because I find that very intimidating. Um, our library is amazing. It's about 10 stories high. And again, like I said earlier, 10th floor, you can see the ocean. That's kind of crazy. Um, my favorite floor the library was the fourth floor. It was the very social floor where you didn't necessarily have to be quiet. Um, so finals week, that's where me and my friends would tend to go so we could have a conversation still while studying and it really helps take the pressure off of you know the stress of finals week it's a lot more intense in college than in high school but it was just nice to have a place where you didn't have to be super intense all the time um, but yeah a lot of our facility oh wow sorry a lot of our facility wow that word i am struggling with <laughs> a lot of our facilities are a lot more updated we have a lot of classrooms that have been here for multiple years and a lot of classrooms that were just built in the past couple. So it kind of depends what department you're in. Is that all of the questions? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, thank you so much, Jocelyn, for joining us today. Uh, I hope you guys learned a ton about UCSB and UCI. I definitely did. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Tomorrow we have our last session which is UCLA with George. Uh, so definitely make sure you come to that at four. And yeah, have a great rest of your day. Bye. <laughs>